be very, very quiet. We're hunting dragons. <laughs> hey, everybody. Hello and welcome back to Massively Overpowered Television, where we are likely not going to be super overpowered today. <laughs> We are going to be trying something very different, uh, very unlike what we would normally be doing, and that is that we are going to be streaming. To so, okay, it's D and D night, everybody. It's our D and D night, and normally we would be playing DDO, but we still have a party member who can't get into DDO because of the account. We have no idea what's going on. We don't know why. It's like maybe his city was put on a lockdown and those IPs can't get in IPs. ISP. <sighs> you know, maybe he can't get in and maybe no one else there can't. We don't know. We just know that it's a problem that Actually, some of us that I had in another game, but it got resolved. So we're not sure when it might get resolved. And we were very bummed to not be playing together. So this is this is our crazy attempt at trying to keep our D and D night uh, a true to itself and to hang out together. Now. Um, uh, let's be fair, okay? We are multiplayer and we are online uh, and it is an RPG. <laughs> so we, okay, we roundabout fit the definition better than some of the games that try to insist on what they, <laughs> that they're MMORPGs. Um, but yes, we are not playing in an MMO tonight. We are going to be starting up a roll 20 kind of um, campaign. Now, we need to, for a lot of you, may not know much about roll 20. Now, I have played tabletop games for many decades. <laughs> many decades. Uh, but I play on the tabletop. <laughs> you know, I got the. Got a couple figurines, a couple favorite figurines. I've got a big old hex map. I've got other little figurines and a whole bunch of six-sided die that sometimes are um, considered different things. Like, right now, they're orcs. <laughs> now, they're trees. Now, yeah. So, they, they become many different things. <laughs> um, but you guys may not be familiar with the program Roll20, or you may be more familiar with it because of uh, watching other shows. Uh, but for folks who are more playing MMOs, and, and a number of our folks, this is actually kind of new. Uh, I know there was another program called Fantasy Grounds, so maybe y'all have other favorite kind of programs that use this. And uh, feel free to let me know about it. Uh, this is the one that my daughter has used. And uh, as I stole some uh, brain stuff from her, then, because uh, the, the people she plays with use it. So I already knew some about uh, the avail what's available and things like that. So I, I went with this. Um, yeah, we're gonna, we're gonna make characters. Oh, and another fun fact is we're going to play uh, fifth edition. I'm gonna flat out admit right away that I have never actually played 5th edition because I prefer 3.5. But 3.5 is not a good starting thing. So uh, these are going to go, this is not going to be a long-term campaign. These are going to pretty much kind of be just like our DDO dungeon runs. These are going to be basically little one-shots, but there's going to be some learning and stuff. So Oh, this is going to be interesting. Oh, wait, where's the where's the chat part? There's the chat. All right, so let me 
move over to now this will be the only time you're going to get to see the gm screen i'm telling you that now because <laughs> when i stream and we do this i'm going to have a another account a, a camera account a I, I don't know what we'll call it it'll be a you know the npc that they need to take around to camp <laughs> We'll call it Sarah Oakhart. And <laughs> now I need to name one Sarah Oakhart. I need to do this. Uh, and that way, when you only see the darkness of the map and where they're going, um, you will all only see what the players are seeing and not what the GM is seeing because the GM sees everything. All right. And by that, I mean, all right, we're going to go in here. First things, I do want to give a shout out to the I'm using um, a map by Dice Grimoire, and uh, that's what you're seeing on the screen. He's got, look, he's got a little uh, patreon.com Dice Grimoire. It, it's cut off a little because I'm having a little trouble with spacing. So, uh, but there are a lot of free, um, wait, is that not, is that showing really weird? Why is that only showing a little bit? These are the kinds of things we're figuring out tonight. <laughs> yeah, no, I was just noticing, I like how the chat and everything was shoved off the side for some reason. I don't even know. Okay, I'm, I brought it back. Um, uh, so, hello, welcome to the GM's part. And uh, the thing I had trouble with was when you make a new map, it is... Uh, you can come up here look you can add a new page and you make a new map and it comes up and it's got a grid now I can change it to hex grids like I'm used to and I did that and then I found when I went and used other um, uh, other maps that people made they were in the squares <laughs> so so I'm like all right forget hexes we'll go back to we'll go to squares but then their squares aren't lined up to the squares here. And then you have to try to line them up with the, and I'm going to tell you, this is the only map I have succeeded right now. This is not a map we're going to be using, but we might start off with this. Uh, so I actually Googled, um, you know, roll 20 maps. And there are people who do this. Now this, this person and the Patreon Dice Grimoire, I can, let me pull up his page and I can stick that in chat or it cannot let me click on the page at all it'll just sit there and oh fine okay be that way fine oh here we go uh tons of maps and then there are three levels though when you go for one of the maps it uh and there are many people that do this so I'll be looking at different things and you can do, there's uh, two levels of Patreon, which are very inexpensive, uh, as well as just a free version. So, I mean, kudos. And not only that, but uh, you don't get maps, but you have art library. Um, stuff you buy on Roll20 plus free assets. And let me just plus this here. This is all free, 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 free. And each of these you open up like dwarves. Look at all these dwarves. Look at all these dwarves. Oh my goodness. See, sorry, Darth. You totally lost out now, dude. Cause look at this. I got dwarf warriors. Look, there we go. There's, there's a, there's a Darth. He's missing out on that. And uh, all of this stuff is free already. And, um, for mobs, for tokens, for characters, for um, building stuff. Anyway, so really, really cool. And I can show you guys how to uh, build the map a little bit as I build the map that we're not going to use. Although maybe I should have picked one I really didn't like because I'm really liking this one now. <laughs> Darn it. <laughs> Don't worry. We'll forget it all by the time we get to it. <laughs> um, but, uh, and then we have... Uh, characters now okay 
Um, people are having trouble editing their characters. Okay. Let's try this again. All right, Sophie, you should be able to edit do yours now. Who all needed me to erase theirs so they can start over? I think Cat didn't finish. Mine seems to be working. All right. Tonight. Who wants a new one? That Because I guess if you didn't finish it all at once. Yeah, I didn't finish, but it seems to be working tonight. Yeah, I didn't finish mine, but when I go into it now... And maybe I'm just doing something wrong. Um, so I go into it now, and it shows my class level, alignment, like all that stuff, my you know, skills. But like I've got, it shows zero strength, minus four dexterity, minus five charisma. Like it didn't, I'm not exactly sure what that's all about. Probably doesn't have your ability scores in it. Yeah, maybe it's something that can be fixed without deleting it, but I am not sure how to do it because the only button I have now is a level up. Okay, well, I can edit. So I. Or can I edit? Yeah, I can edit. I can edit. Shoot, see, now that only goes to there. Oh, maybe you can't. Which is why I was thinking, yeah, if I could, you know, maybe just delete it and start over, I could do it right, but I don't. <coughs> <coughs> well, I have, um, this is one thing I didn't check before, which I assumed, and I should not have assumed at all. Um, I figured that this pre-made character sheet that they had uh, would uh, be built using a, the um, standard point buy-in. Kind of like DDO does. You know, you have so yeah, many that's, extra that's points. That's kind of what and I you... was expecting too, but when I got to that page, it had me, like, it was like custom something. Whatever it was, I was like, okay, I'm just oh, going to ask about this before I do anything. And when I exited and came back, I can't edit it anymore. Okay. Well, yeah, it, and it, it asks you know, that... It has the option to just put your numbers in. It doesn't have the options of which one, which type of, buy, uh, you know, if you want to use rolls or buys or whatever. It didn't have that in that. So that's why I was asking. Okay. Um, like two weeks ago. <laughs> yeah. But uh, it, that, it is what it is now, so. So, um, and because previous generator things that were programmed like this before had already been programmed, so it wasn't until later that I was like, oh, oh maybe it's not working. Um, so my bad and uh, a, a lot of things in this week. So um, so when you made your Sakari, how did you make yours? I, I don't, although rolling I think is funny and fun, uh, it does not necessarily make for good characters. And it makes for more frustrated gaming for some people. So everybody that I've played with, they're like, I just, they yeah, only I do just the... I did 4d6 and then remove one, so... Oh, well, we can I do was... that problem. Oh, when was, sure. Did, when I was sitting abilities last night, I went to the ability tab and then under score method, I chose custom and then it opens up boxes to set each stat yeah and so i referred to the standard numbers and then on a different page and just set them actually using a character generator on a different site to, that had the numbers for standard and kind of set them there and then transferred that over to here but it let me hand set each number that way just by choosing, because custom was like the only score method available. Yeah, which is why I was stopping there. I was like, okay, I'm just going to look this up and see what's yeah, doing. Yeah, it didn't have one built in, so you had to figure out your own scores. And you just manually put them in. You're like, you put in 
if you had a roll that was an 18, you put it in. If you had a roll that was a 10, 15, you put it in. And then it adjusts it based on your racial modifiers and stuff like that. Right. Uh, well, we can just, do, if you'd like to, Hikari, because we can change this up and do the standard 27-point buy-in. Um, uh, the rules for that is uh, your abilities are 8 standard. And 27 points to max things up. You can't go higher than 15 base. But uh, uh, 14 and 15 cost two points uh, instead of one. Did folks understand that? or Because I, I will tell you that I may start like... I don't know, speaking Russian in the middle of this. And so if I do or say anything that's off, then... So me, I mean, I never even did the D6 things. I, I would do like D20. And that's my first characters. That's how I had to make them. And what you rolled is where you put it. And at least that one was nice enough that you could put the score you rolled in whichever one you want instead of like in order. But, you know, you roll a two, you got a two, and you're, you're sucking if that's... <laughs> I've never used D20s for uh, ability scores. I mean, we're, we're talking that was multi, many, many, many. No, what yeah. I had looked at was for the standard was saying you had like a list of numbers 15, 14, 13, 12, 10, 8, and then you just, each of those yeah. numbers you put on a different score. And the standard array is basically the point it's the same numbers as the point buy just it's in a standard array yeah it didn't say anything about point buying or anything it just said take these numbers and put them on your stats <laughs> like okay all right well we should probably make it standard then we can go with hikaris but uh you would probably actually need six-sided dice to do that or, I mean, you could actually do that in the channel and say roll a d6. No, it, it, but... they, I mean, it would take pretty long. It, it's probably good to either just use the standard array or or a point by. But standard array is simplest. It just it's a set, set of numbers. Yeah, does that end but up giving you too many points? I mean, if you literally have a stat at 14 and a stat at 15 and a stat at 13 and a stat at 12. Well, look at the stats I had set for on mine because I was using that standard array where it gave me the list of numbers and then it also, in the big boxes at the top where it's applied the racial and class modifiers to my base. But can you see how I set the numbers below and then, I mean, that's the way I was reading what, how I was supposed to do it. So if that's wrong, then okay, but. Ability score method. Okay, choose or custom. I wonder what the choose was. Um, when I bring this up, it, it brings up the character mancer and it only went as far as abilities. Do all of yours look that way? I want to look at, no, uh, yours doesn't look complete, Kat. Yours well, doesn't. I only got about as far as background. Okay. I haven't, like, finalized this sheet or anything. to figure out those set background terms was giving me a headache last night, so. Uh, 
Well, it's my Sophie's. Yeah, it's working now. Yay. Um, so yeah, yours doesn't come up with a. Can you, while we're talking about all this, can you just delete mine so I can start over or no? Um, I can, or I can set the numbers for you or, well, or, 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 or there's do that. I just, I'm, yeah, I, I feel like I'm sitting here doing nothing and I could be doing something. Oh yeah. No, um, I can do that or uh, cause you have a whole bunch of other things you've already set. I, I know. And I don't all know right. if that's anything I don't have set because I can't get back into it to see. Like, is there anything else that I'm missing? I, I don't know. Um, no, I see. I tried doing as much as I could, and then I was going to go back and finish it, and it just, well, it doesn't let me go back. Yeah, so I can put in numbers for you if you want to work out your numbers. Uh, Hikari did the... Hikari and Kat, you guys want to decide which one, and sh or should we just let you choose either of those right now? Because, I mean, this isn't life or death, kind of. <laughs> I'm not going to care if your stats are slightly out. If it's just easier to do the countdown, how many, wait, is it really from 15, Cat? That's what I'm looking up. It says standard array, 15, 14, 13, 12, 10, and 8. Okay. In yeah. fifth edition, anyway. Yeah, you distribute. Those are your six scores, and you distribute them how you want. Okay. If you want to use that tannic, sounds easiest. Same with Sophie. Um, if it's more beneficial for you, Hikari, you can move to that. But if you like how yours came out, then you can leave it that way too. So you just tell me the numbers, and let me make sure I can input them here, and that should. One thing I would note, Tannic, when I was having issues with it not wanting to let me edit, when I had to shut it down and come back, was uh, if any if you can access any of the drop downs, like changing the drop down on the class tab back to choose, and then rechoosing Ranger opened up all the stuff again for me to be able to edit. So if there's anything at all on this you can change, try changing it and see if that opens things up for you. Just seems to be very flimsy. I, I don't see I don't see a way to do it. So Okay. I'm just Alright. No, no, it, 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 it's a great suggestion. I just don't see a way to do it. Maybe there is. I just I don't see it. All right. Well, if you want to give me your numbers, where you want to put them, Tannic, of those numbers, the 15, 14, 13, 12, 10, and 8, I will type them in and we'll see if it saves it. Then, heck yeah, yay, right? If not, I'll make a new one for you. All right. So just try putting, I mean, just off the top of my head, 15 in dexterity, uh, 14 in plus perception wisdom. I see things changing. Yeah, I did change wisdom and dexterity already. Oh, wait, is that the... Oh, let me try something. Yeah, the small number is your number and the big number is your bonus. Yeah, which is completely opposite of what I thought it was supposed to be. Well, that's what I was thinking. And I was going nuts because I'm like, it's not letting me touch this number. I can't do anything. Yeah. Uh, it, it throws me off. So you might be able to edit it that way yourself. You did. I'm able to. So I'm able to change mine. There you go. Yep. Okay. And then, make, right. sure you, that. And <laughs> then make sure you have all of your all of your attributes your skills rather because well it's got the ones like... checked off that i selected in my you know, setup so okay. i'm assuming it that's should... right 
Yeah, it should be four or five, depending on your background and stuff. So. It's got four. Looks good. Okay, yeah, I was, I was looking at the big number as the number. Never mind me. No, that's, that is exactly how I looked at this thing and fought with it initially. So, uh, to me, the bonus should be the little number, and the big number is the one you use. That's just my eyes. That's my brain. Um, so, so that's good. We got you through that. So, all right. Um, I, I, oh, I don't ahead. understand what the character Mancer is doing when it tries to roll skills. It's like doing the opposite. It's taking your skill roll and then applying your bonus as a negative. So I'm not sure why it's doing that way. So for actual, we'll probably just want to use the regular uh, roll thing for that because I'm not understanding why it's doing that. Did it really give you all this stuff? <laughs> or is this stuff you go and pick up? That you choose that as part of, uh, when you're doing the character creation, it asks you what equipment do you want? Do you want starting standard equipment? Do you want an adventure pack? Do you want this or this? And you, you choose that. It's all based on uh, okay. generation. Okay, that's cool. Everybody starts out with either an adventurer's pack or a scholar's pack. And Ah, nice, nice to know. Once we choose dungeoneer, dungeoneer's pack or explorer's pack, and I saw nowhere that explained what those were. Yeah, you have to know what those are already. And stuff, but yeah, the game just the the character sheet thankfully knows how to do that. So, all right, looks like, like the I don't found... know which to pick because I couldn't find anything that explained to me what they were. <laughs> yeah. Anywhere. I, I, I don't know either. I just picked one that sounded closest. <laughs> That's correct. <what> I did. <laughs> I would, sorry, I could go Google it. That's where we're at right now, really. I was Googling it. Yeah, well, that was see, part of the problem was when I was looking things up online, especially when it came to specifics to Roll20 and their character mancer, 90% um, of everything I found was from the GM side, not from a player setting up a character. Uh, yeah, I want, well, I, I wonder if sometime, I know like with my daughter, when she plays, um, she's actually had it both ways where she sat down with the GM and built up a character right with them, or uh, where she's made characters in a one shot and handed them out these are the characters available you know choose one of those kind of things so but i figured we'd be able to talk together <laughs> uh to to work out some of those now so you guys don't see anything on your screen as far as the map yet right i think no, i think I, I have to click i think i have to click start game uh, but then I don't know how to end the game. <laughs> well, these are the kinds of things we're figuring out tonight, right? Yep. Yeah, but the uh, the equipment packs are in the about halfway down the page or two, three fourths down the page on the link that Sophie provided. But yeah, I just picked the one that was founded. I, I have an acolyte. I got the scholar pack. I think. Yeah, mine mine gave me a third option because you know probably rogue stuff yeah you had lock yeah. picks and pinions and you had you had roguey stuff in yours so it probably does um, uh cater it to your class a little bit um cater is not the right word but you know uh yeah that word that would that would be a word <laughs> um so on the gm side it's really kind of cool so You've got this, you've got a written chat room. So we do have chat easy to see here that we don't have to bounce out to um, Discord, you know, so I'm not trying to follow chat in a, in a whole bunch of ways. Now I can actually uh, make it so that nobody can see this. Uh, I'll be I'll be running on this account but the camera show is going to be doing on our, you know, intrepid cameraman account. So like I, I, if I tried to show fog of war for you guys, it, you're not going to see it. 
reset fog. So, it, it, like, it doesn't show. <laughs> There's, like, you, you don't see anything. It doesn't really change anything. It makes it a little darker, I think. And then if you go to uh, highlight. Oh, man, I did this with a, a bright map. It was easier with the bright map. And... So Hikari's a warlock, Sophie's a monk, Tanix a rogue, and Kat chose ranger. Nice. So you don't see any of the background stuff I said? Oh, the background of your character? Yeah, like on the background uh, tab of the... Uh, let me go to it. I, I should, actually. GM should. Yep. Uh, oh, no. Right now, that's a standard... It says backgrounds. Yeah, their background set to Outlander, and it's got... If you scroll down, it's got all the answers. Tech, flute, origin, homesteader, grew up on an isolated homestead with a father. Yeah, and reserves. That's why I was getting a little more free form because nothing I was seeing in the book fit what I had in mind. Yeah, so one thing with Roll20 that they have is you do have standard, and if you want more elaborate and deeper things, then it, you, you kind of have to you pay in to them. Um, oh, look, you can add another feature. Uh, your bio and info. There are, oh, oh, I can write no. GM notes available, visible only to GM. Hey. Yeah, the, the actual bio of the character mancer sheet is on it. It's its own thing. Um, but it has, I think she has to finish it first. Yeah, I think you have to go through and finish. What, um, what's her equipment tab say? All I said there so far was the basic class equipment in Explorer's pack. Okay, so that it it'll do that on its own if you you've already got all the different weapons and stuff that you've selected, right? Yeah. Okay. So you can go next there. As long as you're okay with those weapons, or you need different weapons. Well, it gives me the longbow, quiver, and arrows by default, and then I chose the axe and dagger as the most likely melee weapons she would have. Okay, cool. Yeah, looks yeah. good. Yep, and then mm -hmm. spells. You don't have spells. You're a ranger. I think I don't get them until level two. Yes, yeah, currently no, no, you don't get, so you don't have to worry about that. Move on to your feats. Uh, no feats. And then... Yeah, I like how it says you really haven't done that much yet. <laughs> and the bio should all be there, yep. Yeah, I haven't written the bio yet, other than filling out those physical stuff. And then reviews. That should have all of it. So I guess you just need to finish up, Kat. Just, yeah. So is there a place where it's just like actually write a background and upload it? Or? After, after you click apply changes, then it gives you that option. Okay. Yeah, so I'm guessing apply changes was what I hit thinking it was basically a save button, but it was a, I guess, publish your character and you can't get back to the character mancer. Exactly. You are exactly correct. It just, it, it runs through the matrix and creates your character at that point. All right. But if there's something else you want to have edited or need to have edited, I, I can do stuff, but I think you guys can do what I can do right now. Uh, oh, there's also, so on show to player, I, I do show this to players. Uh, currently you guys, I have, on your character sheets that all players 
can see character sheets, but I know there are games to play I've played where people hide their character sheets from others. Um, but since we had some learning and some like that, I left them open so folks could help look and, and guide, but I can still hide them if necessary. You know, you, someone's got written in their bio that, you know, on the 15th of every month, they try to kill one party member, right? Uh, they probably don't want to show that <laughs> and it'll come out in play or my friend. Oh my goodness. This is going to date me. Anybody who used to play with me, um, uh, we, we had a friend, Matt, Matt, Matt was a legend. Matt was a legend. Matt would do the craziest things and always killed his characters off. The most noted phrase in our campaigns was Matt, roll a new character. Like seriously, this dude, <laughs> I, I, I will share. I was sharing with a friend tonight, actually. He, um, we come across this place and we, we come across this great big dark pit, throw things in it, no sound. And the, the GM reports that it is a bottomless pit. You know this. You had very talented people trying to, you know, locate a bottom. Uh, Matt, are you sure it's a bottomless pit? Like, yes, it is absolutely, you, there is no doubt, DM, this is a bottomless pit. Matt goes, I want to check. I jump in. <laughs> okay, Matt, roll a new character. That one's gone. You know? <laughs> and he did that so many times. We go in, we, we go into a, uh, in this ruins, temple, whatever, an evil deity's altar is right there and it's radiating. Do not touch me. And everything's like, Matt, I'm feeling a little tired. I'm going to go up and sleep on the altar. And we're like, wait, no. And the DM's all, uh, what? Like, all right, I stretch out on the altar and I want to fall asleep. And then comes down, kills him. Matt, roll a new character. I, I couldn't even count how many characters this guy went through. And one of his ones that he tried to make was a thief that would steal from everyone in the party. And the entire group was like, no, we refuse. We're not playing with a, a party killer, you know? We're not, we're not doing that. We can't do that. <laughs> so, yeah, that, that would... And had he made the character and the DM allowed it, you know, he probably would have not wanted to tell people in the party this. Um, but as players, we all... We vetoed that. <laughs> Uh, and then he'd kill himself over silly things. Oh, I failed this thing. I killed myself. Wait, why, Matt? Anyway, yes, Matt was a legend. Roll a new character, Matt, is one of my uh, things I associate with D&D <laughs> more than anything else. <laughs> uh, so, so while everyone is uh, tidying up their characters, this is so... We can also pick <clears throat> for you guys. Uh, oh gosh, how did she pick the little player character? All right, what my daughter used for a player was a little hexagon that would move around. And I don't remember how to. I know how to put all the mobs on here and everything. Now I don't. I'm going to have to check on moving characters. <laughs> um, so that's background. We need to go. Okay, background's locked. Objects and tokens. So Cat is a ranger, say, right? You're an elf? What elf ranger is? Yes. Characters. I have Elf Ranger, but I think that's a guy. Um, so I don't have access to personalized ones. Now, if we bring this little Elf Ranger over. Let's put him on the stairs. I 
and now this is kind of fun because here we go. If he's asking, is everyone an elf or is Tanak going to be the odd one out? Well, I made mine a halfling, so. Oh, uh, is Sakari an elf as well? Yep. Um, I'm guessing by the questions, Sophie's an elf? I guess. Well, if Sophie wasn't an elf, they wouldn't be asking, is everyone an elf? Yep. <laughs> I, I was tempted to be like, all right, we need to make a cobalt party in honor of my awesome cobalt campaign that I got to play in, but nah. <laughs> oh, how do I? Okay, I'm one. I at this at this juncture, I'm not exactly sure if I have to give you guys a token or if you guys get a token because you get to move your tokens around. On the board. Sophie says, I totally be up for a cobalt party. I could be a cobalt dressed as a halfling. <laughs> so I'm a rogue. Oh, hey. Oh, how many little symbols do you... Oh, lots of symbols. When I hit edit on mine, it does give me the option to have a token file added. Yeah, I, I, okay. I thought I had already created my own token. Let's see. That's to say you're dead. I cannot turn this off. Oh, there we go. All right, let me go there back to character sheets and. Are they off of the character sheets? You know, I. This. <laughs> I'd spent uh, so much of my time like building up a dungeon. Oh, and like so showing folks who are looking at this. So in these different dots on the top, uh, you could put specific values. Like for me, I would put, um, and that oh, for the, for the game, um, it's red. Oh, sorry, Tannic. The first one is red. And because we're all coming from MMO lands, sorry, I, I have to stick with, um, health in that one. So you could put what your health is, um, nobody has too much like maybe someone has eight points of health right now and then the middle one your armor class i don't know does anybody have a 16 armor class or is that two All right. and then your man of wool over here i don't know if anybody has one of those let's just say uh it's really kind of cool so you've got those on your character and you will literally, you know, move around for full action. You know, can you move full action? How many hexes? hexes I can't say hexes now. Uh, how many squares, you know, you'll move forward. And uh, if you get hurt, like, and I as a GM can go in and type this or you guys can do it. You know, I say, you know, you take four points of damage, you know, minus four. And it adjusts the number for you until you heal and stuff so that you're... Uh, stats are right there on the board on your character with you. Which I think is really kind of cool. Uh, there's also is that the GM can, so you can uh, denote different things like uh, if you're blinded, say, look, they've got Z's for sleep, you know, you've been put to sleep. Or, um, I don't know what all these would be. My daughter showed me this one first. You know, she's like, and then if your character died, X, <laughs> they're, they're down. <laughs> okay. <clears throat> uh, those are kind of small, but you can, of course, move the map up and make it bigger um, to be able to see what's going on. 
And so we will be able to visually demonstrate uh, the status your character is in, uh, how much health and stuff he has. So, I mean, it's not a health bar, it's a health circle. So... <laughs> So that is, um, I should just make Mo. So Mo was the first NPC we were going to build. I haven't, I hadn't built Mo yet. Uh, of course he'd be a warrior, right? And, uh, in the fog of war, no, since you guys don't see a map yet, um, if I hit start game, can I then can I then end game? Let me come over here and see if I can do that so that you guys can see what I'm seeing on the board instead of uh, like having to look at the stream. Let me try that. But I really like Roll20 does offer uh, quite a large selection of things uh, for you to look at now. Uh, and on my note on here, so as everybody started to open up, why is it not opening? Like having a hard time just getting to my character page. There we go. All right, if we say launch as a player instead. We're going to hit launch game and see what happens. <laughs> All right. So because I don't have the other player in here, what do you guys see now that I've launched the game? Are you actually, are you actually able to see the map now? I still see nothing except squares and someone drew ovals. Oh, you might have to refresh since we're already in here. I restarted the game even. Okay. Well, I'll have to fix. Good thing I was only going to do some voice stuff. Uh, <laughs> so, but I guess you can see it on the stream if you're able to be watching stream. Um, I have a whole overlay that has GM info overlay. So I have where I can put, um, uh, say I put something in this box down here at the bottom. You know, there are three boxes drawn on here. And I write in here that there is an item hiding in one of the boxes. So if players come through and they search, you know, and they get a good search, then, you know, in the box there is something. And all of that stuff can already be pre, uh, pre noted. And there's like, oh my gosh, there is, uh, where is it? The Gabriel Picard's appetizer platter, desert dwelling. Oh, see, there's actual, there are maps in here. There are empty maps. There are full maps. There are. <clears throat> sci-fi tokens when you're doing the sci-fi stuff um there was one was it called tavern i went all through here and now i'm not sure if i can find it right away but uh i mean it had tables and chairs and food and cups and i mean you can really 
decorate out these maps and put a ton of things in. Oh, there we go. I think it's Grey Tail's Tavern Pack. There you go. Benches, bars, knives, jugs, a floor, um, a stack of plates. Uh, and when I put the note down, I can say that, you know, there's a something on this or, uh, well, shucks, I was hoping you'd be able to see the, the fog of war. Uh, I'll make sure I get that working obviously beforehand. Cause what, it, what happens is just like in DDO in the map, uh, the entire thing will be black except where you are. And as however much vision you have, I go through and I can open up um, areas. So either you, if you can see the whole room, it would open up the whole room or it would open up little bits at a time of where you can see. And then you'll see, oh, I guess where's, where's the door to this thing? I don't know. Is this, is this the door? Uh, <laughs> I can't tell where the door of this thing might be. <clears throat> um, so as you're exploring places, you would only see where the fog of war has been lifted just like on, you know, uh, an MMO map. I think, I think a lot like Path of Exile and uh, DDO has it where it's all dark and you have to run through to open up things on the map. So you wouldn't see the majority of the map yet. You'd just know, oh, look, you go here, you have uh, one door to come in, you have stairs that go down, you have stairs that go up, where do you go? And just and such like that, but I guess I can't show you that because it doesn't seem to be starting the game or maybe none of us are supposed to be in here when we start it. I'm, <clears throat> I'm learning roll 22 as well, my friends. So, oh, Sophie was drawing the purple circles. Um, can other people see the bio and info text or just the picture? Uh, a picture. And some text, wood elf average height, blah, 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 armed with staff and dagger and sling. All right, because I know that the GM gets to see more than others. There's also yeah, a way. To actually see the character sheet. Yeah, the bio and info page is all I see when I click on there. And for people who do all text when they're doing this, here's a fun one. So when I'm speaking as Angel, you know, I, I will be in and it will come in as Angel. But then say I'm the I'm the NPC, you know, welcome to Mop. Hey, why did it not? Okay, it's supposed to work. Hang on. There we go. So the NPCs can be talking. And I believe I can also, you guys can whisper to the GM, GM only, you know, something like, hey, I want to check this out or uh, I'm, I'm going over to this side. You know, sometimes there are things you want to try and do that aren't, you're not announcing to the whole party. Or, you know, say one of your party members gets, you know, you think they're mezzed or something and you want to hit them over the back of the head <laughs> or, you know, crazy. You want to make a clandestine deal with somebody at the black market. You know, you can actually, it's, uh, I believe might be slash GM. I think there's a note on which one. Oh yeah. Sophie's been rolling. Uh, so I have always used dice on the table, which we're not going to use. So that's hard. But, uh, um, when you're rolling things, uh, just a plain slash R. And I believe you could do if you're like two D six and hit it. There you go. Oh, I rolled two fives. Well, wow. really? So slash R is roll and roll 1d20 because we're rolling for initiative. Five. Moe's not going any time at all, guys. Feel free to walk all over him. He's just going to be standing there quietly. 
Uh, so it actually does the rules right in, right in the chat. So you don't have to worry about not having dice. Um, yeah, when we did it remotely, we also did the roll under, um, well, we trusted people usually on their rolls. <laughs> but so this has a lot, so you can, you, you make up the maps, um, the GM, I won't bring this down too much. You have a way to make tons of different maps to go through your whole adventure. And uh, you save them up and bring them up. And obviously, folks are not going to be seeing those uh, until you bring them up. There is a way to do overlay music, yep, jukebox, you know, things like that. But we already worry about music and stuff. So we're not, we're not touching any of that. We're ignoring all of it. Um, there is a spot here where you can actually search for uh, different information. Oh, I'll say no adventure found. Okay. Maybe the, there you go. Go to races, you know, here you go. It's going to tell you about the different races. So you have some chances to go look up some info since our dwarf abandoned us you know here here you go learning about what dwarfs are your ability scores ages having dark vision so how detailed do we have to get with equipment like ah uh... So you will keep track of exactly what your character has. And if it is not on your character sheet, you don't have it. Because by the Outlander background, it says I'm supposed to have a staff and a trap and traveling clothes and some amount of gold. But I don't see any place to put that in. Because it's a custom background on the... It should have just auto put the stuff on your character of what your equipment is. And if it didn't, on your character sheet, it doesn't um, look like you like middle finished. middle bottom. Do you have an item name area? Did you go through and finish and apply changes, Cat? Not yet, because I was still trying to get all this equipment in that I it says I'm supposed to have. Yeah, it looks like I can add it because since we're going to be picking up things throughout, you know, a campaign, I'm guessing you can add and remove things once you've created your character. So maybe you have to create the character first. Because mine, that I do have a little plus and whatever. Yeah, you on can there. always add more stuff later. Yeah, I think it. I think it should auto populate the thing you choose, Scott. Like Tanix did that. You you clicked it. Now when you go to your character, you've got all that equipment down in the bottom. You didn't go ha go hand right in hemp rope, water skin, tinderbox, and all that stuff, right? Yeah, so far I've just got class equipment, which gave me the leather armor and longbow, quiver, arrows. So weapons. you you don't you don't see your character sheet yet, Cat. You're not seeing a character sheet. You're making it. So if you've clicked the box of what thing you're picking. Uh, and like Tanik, what did you say yours was? Rogue something or burglar's pack? A burglar's yeah. pack. He just clicked burglar's pack, and then went if on. We have to. We can add more afterwards. But yeah, like I said, I've, I've got a little plus yeah, thing, and it'll let me remove things. And okay, yeah, it gave me the choice of dungeoneer's pack or explorer's pack, and I chose explorer's pack. Okay. Yep, yeah, because I mean, even when I bring it up, I can't see your character. Page. All right, I will save it then. Until you've gotten through. Yeah, my main concern was the numbers, but I was trying to change okay, the long there, there. Okay, I did the apply changes. Okay, so then I should be able to...
Oh, it's rolling. <laughs> Hello. Maybe it, it might still be doing the Yeah, it, it might be. <laughs> it's still uh, updating itself there. It, it took a while for mine to complete. Okay. Since my name and my character's name were both marked as Tannic, I didn't see that I could change the uh, chat for who's talking. Um. Oh yeah, and down in the bottom, I mean, obviously, I turned off video. I'm not gonna have people's video showing. Um. Yeah, no, I can see it now. I changed my character name. Yep. So that I yep. can. I see that we got lurking. Lurkin lives. Lurkin, my Lari, and Thursday. Yep. And then it's got that little little cheap. <laughs> Chat's a little cheap. Nope. Once I was in the background and I was like, what is, what is that? What is that? What did that? What made that sound? For most roles, you can click on the right part of the character sheet and make the appropriate role for it. Oh, you mean like attack rolls or something? Wait, is that actually well, like, on the character sheet? If I had sheet? to do a strength roll, like I, I did a test roll before. And of course the first test roll I did when I couldn't figure out how to do my numbers was a 20. Oh, nice. Wait, so how do you... Oh, like if you click on strength? Yeah. So if you need strength, you just do a strength roll. If you need a deception check, you just do a deception. And what it's doing is it's rolling your first roll and then your second roll just in case you have advantage. So why am I only rolling one? Is there something else I don't have set correctly? Oh, oh, here we go. Mo, I'm Mo. I forgot I'm Mo right now. Um, no wonder I'm throwing myself off really bad. <laughs> Sorry. Um, your question, Tanik, was like, okay, you look at the rolls. Mm -hmm. Everyone's rolling two. I'm rolling one. Oh, but that's a stealth. Oh, wait. Cat gets two on her stealth. See, but even if I do, like, I roll one. And I didn't change anything else. Um, I do not um, know. In your, in your settings and the little gear on your, on your character sheet, mm -hmm. there's a roll queries, always roll advantage or not. Oh, mine says advantage toggle. I can change that to always roll. Why? I mean, I didn't change that. Before, did you guys go in and change it to always roll advantage? No, it just probably when there was the problems creating your character sheet, it probably didn't set your under, settings right. Are you talking about under dice options? On no, on the on the actual character sheet tab, where it says That's core cool. bio spells. Ah, stealthy. And there's a gear, then you do the gear. Man, that's no. that's, that's gonna throw me off. <laughs> Oh, neat, neat, neat. Okay, so then my question is, if I do this, and then roll, I'm going to roll a perception. I want to know if you guys see it, or if only MJ sees it. Ah, it specifically says to GM, so I think only MJ saw that. Yep. I mean, well, everybody can on the stream right now, uh, and well, I yeah, can but, I can tell the you, difference you the idea. because it's in uh, parentheses, so it's showing me that that's something that is only coming to me. Yeah. So when I have the when I have the toggles turned on at the top of my page, I've got public to GM advantage normal disadvantage, so I can swap things on the fly. I kind of like that. Yeah. Yeah, so, yeah, no one's going to be seeing that anymore after. <laughs> I, 
mean, I'm really kind of excited about this. It is going to be new and different, and uh, not that I hope that, I mean, I hope Tannic gets back into DDO soon, because, you know, we miss. <laughs> it would be so nice to have our, you know, actual game back together. <laughs> but, uh... But I think this will be fun. And Brie was actually excited to, she was like, oh my goodness, go for it. Let's give this a try. Um, because, you know, it is tied into our our game. and But it is strangely, slightly different, you know. <laughs> but uh, hey, if we can count, you know, three-man games. Uh, so we've got the rolling down now. So backstory, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to tell everybody and uh, our chat will get to know so we're basically we're starting and they are going to be little one shots and perhaps uh well our characters will move between them but there's no overarching campaign because uh, this is a, an experiment right now one two we don't know when he can get back in the game so it wouldn't be fun or fair to have an overarching story and we only, you know, go through three dungeons and no one ever, you know, nothing goes with the story. You know, so we're basically going to be treating this about like DDO, right? New adventures. We've gone into the harbor and there were notices up, you know, calling on adventurers. No experience necessary. Come to uh, the such and such inn. I mean, I didn't, <clears throat> this is terrible. I didn't put that right now. Right. Uh, to apply. Right. So basically our group's going to come together and get, this is where Matt also comes in. He'll be like, oh, well, I don't want to go to this meeting. <coughs> like the, the intro meeting to get the party together. It's like, well, how are you going to join the party, Matt? Uh, I don't know. I'll just randomly bump into him. So, you know, <laughs> dude, <laughs> Matt was such a special character, but he made gaming fun. Um, so he's asking if it's set in a traditional D and D settings or okay. okay. Like, are we, are we doing ever on here? <laughs> no, no. So he's not the most annoying player in the world. You just had to know him. Right. And, and know his, <laughs> we were all a group of friends before playing together. So, I mean, the first couple times you're like, I, my feeling is if my character dies, I don't think I can play ever again. He, <laughs> he's the bard from Gamers 2. Um, I'm keeping it. We're keeping it uh, D&D. We're keeping it. Uh, now, if I were to run something for friends, like another time, uh, a an actual campaign campaign, then... Uh, it would be homebrew, likely. I, I prefer, I have stories, you know. Um, but for this, I mean, we're literally, it's it's kind of an expansion of our DDO games, even though nobody had, had to take what character they had, right? But that's what we're going to do. We're, we're coming together to a tavern, going to get the job, going... It's the kind of picture we're like in the harbor. At you're in the harbor. DDO. Yep, you've gone in, you've... You've set your death waypoint in the tavern, right? <laughs> the DDO multiverse with all the different things available. Yep, and we then go and, um, you know, explore the ruins for that time, right? Or go and solve this mystery for this time. And each one of them I'm trying to make fit within the hour and a half. I mean, maybe it won't. This is... This is new and how we're doing this right um so there won't be a million mobs there won't be a million you know it's it's gonna try to be that bite-sized dungeon you go in you do the dungeon you get the flavor a little bit of the story you come back out you turn it in and you're done that's that's what my aim is for this so we're we're it's basically going to be our ddo night but instead of running through the visuals like folks are going to see little icons moving along the map and you're going to have to say what you're doing. You know, I'm going to um, run ahead in stealth, uh, you know, get behind. If you have enough movements, you have, you know, you'd have to go enough squares and then get behind 
to uh, if you have a half action to try a sneak attack or uh, in my case and probably a good reason we're not having me play is I cast fireball I cast fireball I cast fireball you know I wouldn't even have to say it anymore I'm like I'll just roll right <laughs> it's all I do is cast fireball I just roll for fireball roll for fireball roll for fireball that's you know that's basically all and uh, one of the differences will be cat for you um, there is one, your character should be able to, can you roll initiative right from your, your character page on the initiative thing? Does it roll right there? Oh, it does. Look, it lights up. Oh, see, I just rolled, I just rolled my Laurie's initiative. Um, uh, so highest number gets to go. <laughs> And you'll go in order for battle, so not everybody gets to go at once. You say what you're going to do, and your actions will resolve. Oh, you wanted to send this result to the turn tracker, but it's no valid tokens. We don't have tokens. Yeah, it's just shining red at me, so I wanted to check out what it was, what it was telling me. Um, so in this case, the way it would be going is... Or if I made that role for the NPC, the NPC would be going first. So even if everybody saw the NPC, he would be faster. And so his attack and damage would count first. And then next in this group would be Tannic. Tannic's action would go next. And his damage and everything. Whoa! Uh... Okay. It's just one of my abilities, one of my background abilities. Oh, that you're sharing? I'm like, wait, what? I'm like, what, what, what? It, pretty much anything you click will go to chat if you tell it to. Oh. Um. But, yeah, there might be times, like, okay, so you're doing all this, and we're, there may be times where I will say, roll, roll a d20, and you'll be like, why? I don't, no, you just roll it. And that's what the slash R D20 then would be in chat. Sophie, the party is crushed beneath the weight of the box text. <laughs> um, so there will be times where I will have you make surprise rolls and not tell you why. Or not tell you till after. So it's not like you could use strength or, you know, something from your character sheet. So it is good to know how to roll uh, besides that. But yeah, those big... those big initiative roles that's really cool uh and that way if a character dies um before you uh, have your turn then you could actually on your turn turn and attack a different character you know it's so it's uh the dice yeah, rolling like yeah, there is the dice rolling icon. Um, I have it, yeah, over here where you could do, you know, 5d10s. Here we go, 5d10s. Um, there are some games where there's not even enough to do this. Oh, advanced dice roller. Let's take a look at that. Where yes, I'm looking at. the game that I played you could have 20 d6s like that's why i have a big big bag of d6s oh here you go roll 20 d6 and then i have a plus one. Ooh, oh wow there's some good sixes in there um, but the thing is when you do this you end up having to you take out the sixes and you take out the ones and then you add up everything else I wonder if they can actually do that. The the compounded style, I think, is the ones that it does, where it does every time you roll a six, it rolls another one, rolls another one, rolls another one. Ah. I know nothing about that. So. Yeah, that was that was playing in the champions uh, universe, champion not champions online, but champions the. Uh, well, actually, maybe Champions Online is kind of like Champions. I actually never stopped to... So, yeah. Okay. 
You can have some fun with some dice rolling, right? Uh, but I actually, I find it just easier to do slash R than multiple buttons, but... So that, that is how we're going to be doing things. Now, I know we didn't start. I, I, I introduced what we're going to be doing. Now, as a, as a group, um, she's not going to want to come in here because we're live. But I will, uh, let's see, how, how to, how do players add their token on board in roll? 20 because I don't know clicking on the settings cog button brings up the new window where you can name the token set permissions on who can control the token oh wait am I even in the I need to be on the object and token window advanced Yeah, unfortunately, we still have this screen that was up here before. We haven't actually started the game on our side. Yeah. Yeah. But we... It does look like once we have the ability to move something, there is that arrow in the tools in the upper left. Yeah, we'll yeah. Select yeah. and move. I, normally, on, yeah, on our roll 20, once, once it's up there, you can just move your own character around all you. Here we go. Controlled by... Uh, here we go. If we're going to give cat control. Okay. I just found the page for that. Um, this does not have to be your token cat, but you guys don't actually see this, even though I launched the game. Correct. No. So I wonder... I have to refresh. I think this old map is what's in our way. It's like literally in our way. It needs to go away. Um, The purple map, the one that I'm using? No, the one that we are seeing where it's just a blank thing with some things that Sophie has wrote on. Oh, I don't have or see that. It should automatically, whatever you tell us to see is what you tell us to see. Yeah, I mean, we're all in the same game. There shouldn't be anything, like, we shouldn't be able to override what the GM wants to show us. Hold on, let me get down to... Is it maybe because we don't have tokens on there, it doesn't know what to show us? Because it's not going to show us the entire map. Like you say, it's hidden until we uncover it. So we shouldn't see what you see. And if we're not on the board yet, we shouldn't, maybe we shouldn't be seeing anything. All right. I just, there's a fog of war. And I just undid the fog of war in a spot. But if you guys aren't seeing this map and you're only seeing the thing that Sophie drew on, I, now it says yeah. you must drag us to the different maps that you want us to be on. Okay. Um, yeah, that's, that's like kind of what I was saying. It's like we're not on her map yet. Well, I did a drag. Cat, did you go anywhere? Okay, let's, I'm just going to come drop you people in this little fog of war area and have no idea if that I haven't assigned tokens to everybody. I know. Sophie's saying, should we find showing us stuff without tokens if the GM wants to show us pictures or documents? Which makes perfect sense to me. I'm just I was just guessing when it came to the tokens thing, but kind of goes along with what I was saying. Like, if the GM wants to show us something, it shouldn't matter what we drew on the thing here. You should just be able to show it to us. Okay, 
that player ribbon, the red player ribbon player bookmark, determines which player the players are looking at, which page the players are looking at. Click and drag the player ribbon to move it between pages. Um, there, there, we basically need to be, you, you need to tell us where we need to see. <laughs> Yeah, so, uh, so that's what we will next next time. We will actually uh, start up the dungeon campaign. Everything will be all set. We have our characters ready. We got the introduction of how it's going to start, and each one will probably be a maximum of two maps, and. So now you've seen the <laughs> massively overpowered MMO site <laughs> taking their first attempt at tabletop via computer. Cause I mean, obviously we're not all going to sit down at a table together and two, come on, we can't leave the computer completely, right? We can't just log off and go, go to the world or something, <laughs> right? <laughs> Uh, so that is where we are going to end, uh, for our stream. Look at this. See, I'm opening up another fog of war area, but you can barely see the difference on the GM. That's why I'm curious what the player bit is going to look like. And, uh, all the kinks are going to be out and we are going to be dungeoning in two weeks for this. So, but the stream time folks has ended so we are going to be signing out for that and we'll have all our kinks rolled out and all together we've got our party set up we are ready to roll and that's what we'll do next time be sure to check out the stream team calendar uh let us know okay i'm almost afraid to ask <laughs> for you to let us know what you think of this strange direction we're giving a try as we keep our D, &D night true to form and play some tabletop D, &D online uh, with multiplayers you know and the link is in chat and that will take you right to the stream post for today as well as show you the stream team calendar and you can go of course read up on everything that there is on MOP. So thank you so much for joining us, everybody. Have a most wonderful, amazing Friday Eve and looking forward to a, uh, if you're in the US, a nice long weekend and I hope it is great and wonderful. I'll see you sometime soon, if not sooner. Doodles.